Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of the CCA California Podcast. Good to be with you another week. Certainly appreciate all of you hanging out with us. Tony, Darren, welcome back. Hello, How are hello. you guys? Good, good. Darren, two weeks in a row. Yeah, we're going to try and make it three. You, you have it bailed. I'm no. I like him. I'm liking it. Um, Tony, how are you? Oh, I'm good. A little sore, but all good. Yeah, you had an epic day yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was a lot of fun. Oh, I'm so jealous. Caught some waves, caught some fish. So jealous. It was or, a good day. I'm still waiting for my invite. Uh, <laughs> Let me know when you invite him. I want to see him try to surf. Yeah. It's been... You know, I, I have about six boards you can choose from. So. Okay. I actually have one on my own. It's a 5'8 fish, but I haven't what? used it in like 20 years. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, before we get started, Tony, we have got a wonderful message from our wonderful sponsors. Yeah, here at CCA, we are syndicated. Fishing Syndicate offers one of the best line lineups of premium fishing rods designed, prepared, and built by fishermen for anglers of all ages. That's you. The FS Passion shows in each one of their quality products. They design and build quality products that meet and exceed the desires and demands of all anglers, which provide maximum strength, confidence, and long-term reliability while you're out fishing. From trout to cow bluefin, there's an FS straw that'll meet your needs at a very affordable price. Don't forget, custom orders are available too. Visit fishingsyndicate.com to check out the lineup or visit the shop in La Habra Tuesdays through Saturdays. And don't forget to gram, grab some FS swag as well. Get syndicated. Thank you, Tony. And without further ado, great friend of the podcast is in studio with us, Benny Florentino. Benny, welcome back, man. Welcome, How are welcome. you? Oh, thanks for having me. Um, doing well, thanks. Get, looking forward to this weekend off until Monday. <laughs> Most people are looking forward to a weekend to go fish. You just want a weekend off. I just want a weekend off, yeah. You know. Plus the weather's not going to be the best, so it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we were just talking about it. You've been fishing a lot lately. Yeah, quite a bit, actually. Um, um, and fishing has been good at the islands. I mean, really, really good. So, so um, Catalina and Clemente. Catalina, Clemente. Um, local's been a little tough. You know, that water temp has just been some challenges. We need a big southern hemisphere swell to uh, get some warm water towards us. I know down south is pretty good. I mean, heck, they're hammering the yellows at the island right now, at mm -hmm. Coronado's. Yeah. Um, and the yellows at Clemente want a bite. They just won't. You know, we see schools of 20-pound-plus yellows chasing jigs, but they won't eat. So there's a lot of life at the islands. They're just not turned on yet. Yeah, I think so. And we need to jump temp, water temp jump up maybe a few <coughs> degrees, and I think we'll be pretty darn good so yeah that's awesome well with um with everything going on right now i mean it's kind of this whole springtime it's been a little weird where it's like it wants to bite kind of like what you said but it just it just hasn't gotten going it's like we need a jump start on all the di all the different uh, markets yeah i think spring is here now the way it's biting it's it, it should have bit this way maybe about oh maybe a month ago like late april so you kind of see it everywhere. I wouldn't say summer's here yet. I think summer will probably see the beginning of July. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the most part, you know, it's, you know, we've had doom and gloom every day for about a month as far May, as the weather. May, June gloom. I mean, I, I know it's an acronym, but my mm -hmm. goodness, I, I'm over those. I really am. I'm <laughs> over the rain. I'm over wearing bibs, boots, and, and hoodies and jackets. I want to get in shorts, sandals, and a tech shirt. You know, <laughs> I, I'm in. I'd rather do that and fish barefooted on the on the skiff. Yeah, um, the skiff. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. it, until then, uh, we'll have to just keep rolling with the punches. You know, yesterday was like a glimpse. We were down at uh, Newport uh, demoing the new 34 Camus uh, and doing a photo shoot, and it was actually kind of warm in the mm -hmm. middle of the day. So I actually wore sandals and. Nice. shorts and jacket so do you think the red tide is affecting conditions right now um it hasn't at the islands that i did somebody said there was some red tide i haven't seen it but i guess yesterday and you guys have it down this way um, a little bit i mean it, it could be but you know half day boats down there like in la jolla and they're still biting those guys are like getting like 100 bass and releasing you know half that amount so it may or may not. Maybe it, it's just a sign the water's getting warm. Um, I know that the rockfish are puking up red crab down south, you know, and 
Some of the yellows even have red crab. You know, we've mm-hmm. had the priosomes up at Catalina and the sailor jellies everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so the life is around. There's tons of bait offshore. Um, so the table's set, you know, and guys are getting tuna south, you know, around that Ensenada area. And I don't know. I mean, something's got to get. We need some just some some stable weather. And uh, we need more people to go fishing. So yeah, that's the that's thing. exactly what we need. Because a lot of boats aren't making it out because, mm-hmm. oh, man, they're just catching 200 sculpin or, you know, <laughs> they're only catching, you know, five or six halibut. But, and even on the weekends, you know, I'm talking to some of my friends on the boats. They're like, yeah, I just can't get people to come out. Yeah. So it would really help the whole fleet, all the fleets, that if we get more, a little bit better weather, you know, fish start biting, then the people come. So, yeah. so we'll see. Going back to the red crab, does that have a <coughs> big effect on fishing at all? Um, as far as bass goes, uh, for the bass, yeah, it makes them lazy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they just sit there, open their mouth, and inhale those things. They don't have to work. Yeah, um, you really got to coax them to bite. You got to be in an area where, like those little prizomes, you know, those little red um, mm-hmm. things floating around. All the fish are full of them, but yet they're still willing to eat a lure or a live sardine, you know, if it's in front of their face. Um, but it all depends what areas of, of, of the island or place you're fishing, where they are or they're not. But a lot of them are, are puking them up and, you know, they're eating them. But I think they're fattening themselves up, though, for the spawn, too. A lot of them are getting really round. A lot of the big females are eating big baits at, at Clemente. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh yeah we we, i mean you know we're catching them in the five to six pound range nothing real giant biggest one we caught is over seven um this year oh yeah wow number nice yeah yeah so um they're there we haven't i haven't seen anything like above that yet Mm -hmm. um there was a two-day tournament on the little g down at clemente over the weekend and they you know uh, a lot of fives and sixes so I mean, fives and sixes aren't bad. I was going to say, <laughs> five and sixes, I'll, I'll do that all day long. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I think fishing's there. You just got to get more people to fish. I mean, I what I do, I'm continually busy. You know, I mean, I I threw some numbers at you guys, what I did the last couple of weeks, and yeah. it, it's pretty pr- – when I look back and look at my log and just – It's impressive. So, yeah, I have to – you know, I like to do those just, just for my own sake, but I knew I was coming on the podcast – so I just wanted to share it with, you know, uh, the listeners yeah. because you don't think much of how many bass you actually catch until you actually put it on and put a number to it. And I record these every day on my log. Mm-hmm. So I go, wow, that's pretty darn good. You know, you five days and you're doing 60, five, four or five days, you're doing 240, 500 bass. It's like, wow. That's on that note, fishing. how many lap counters do you go through in a, in a season? <laughs> um well, I mean, sometimes I'll put it out. Sometimes it's just I'm keeping score myself because, I, yeah. you know, when people are fishing, I just let them have at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we do, you know, we start really starting to ca- catch them. It's kind of nice to find out how many you actually catch, you oh, know. Yeah. Um, and I'm usually the buffer. I we usually don't count my fish. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I try to catch at least one bass just because I've caught one calico bass on every trip I've done since I've been guiding. That's like almost 15 years. It's like your so. ritual. Yeah, I just want to get my token one in. So, <laughs> yeah. um, But for the most part, it's all my guests. You know, that's their count. Mm-hmm. So when you look at it, when it's two guys, three guys, or three anglers, two anglers, it's it's pretty good number, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I mean, let me, let, I, I kind of read them off to you guys, but, yeah. but uh, I – bear with me. Mm-hmm. Um this is all Catalina, so 67, 49, 51, 36, 63, all at Cat. Oh, and one yellowtail during that week. It was, you know, 10, 12 pounds. Um, 74, 68, 71, 62, 72, all San Clemente. It just tells you how challenging the local scene is. Mm-hmm. 8, 12, 11. Ooh. So you total all that up. That's 644. At 13 trips at 49.54 average. <laughs> San Clemente average is 69.4. Catalina is uh, 53.2. Local is 10.3. Again, that's three days. So so that's a 
That's a substantial number when you look at it. I think most landings would love to have that count. No to kidding. Call in yeah, every day. No kidding. And, you know, again, I I stay in my lane. I'm the bass guy. But, mm -hmm. you know, if the yellows are there, we're going to... We're going to chase them. I, mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with chasing yellows on the surface iron. It's yeah. like my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Um, big fish this so far this year is over 6, uh, 6.7, uh, and one yellow. So, But the year is still young. We're only yeah. at the end of May, and mm. we when, had a lot of weather. When did you really start this year? January first. Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, okay. I did. I did start <laughs> chartering. Have an off season. <laughs> yeah, I did start chartering, off. but we did our annual January first trip uh, with a bunch, a couple of us. We went to the island. Matt, Matt was there, and um, <laughs> me and my buddy Eric. I mean, we we caught fifty something bass at Clementi, and, and I had big fish. It was just seven pounds. On a swim bait, so that, that's a fantastic way to start the year. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we we used to do that like forever, like over twenty plus years mm -hmm. to fish on New Year's Day. So it eliminates you from having too much fun on New Year's Eve. My birthday's on New Year's <laughs> Eve, so I don't I don't celebrate my birthday because there's enough people celebrating it for me. <laughs> so yeah. I rest and, and and get ready to fish the next day, and uh, you know we're up early and. Go charge and fish Clemente, and we have a one fish weigh in with a for a dollar. I'll think about that nowadays. Every New Year's Eve, we're we're all parting for Benny. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I I think about it every year. He goes, thank God I'm not waking up hungover, but they're <laughs> celebrating for me. So yeah. Um. So it, I you know like it in the bass fishing world. There's really there really is no season because you could either fish the islands, you could fish local, you can fish in the inner harbor. You know, spotty sand bass, even small calicos. So mm -hmm. um, let's face it, everybody's doing it now. We're just doing it from a boat. Yeah. yeah. But those are options. Those are options I have um, when I take people fishing. Weather's bad, let's go fish in shore. There's plenty of areas to fish, and mm -hmm. you never know what kind of trophies. I mean, we caught them as big as like 9, 10 before uh, big sand bass on spinner baits and cranks and A rigs, you know, and then spotties up to three and a half pounds. So, there's some options, you know, people want. It's yeah. not always about the trophy calicos, you know. Mm -hmm. There's there's a time and place for it, so. Speaking of crankbaits, the only time I fished crankbaits was <clears throat> with you and, and Matt. <laughs> and I swear, my arm still hurts from that. <laughs> it's crazy. But it, it's a... <laughs> It, it works out really well. Caught a very, very, very large sand bass on, on yeah. the crank. It was cool. It's fun stuff. Yeah, it's like throwing the iron. You got a long cast, grind, and don't, yeah. and you get bit. It's the best. Yeah. Tony, yeah, have you sure. thrown a crank bait for bass before? For ba not for saltwater bass. With freshwater. But for freshwater bass. Oh, yeah. Same thing. It's it's mm -hmm. yeah. It's fun. That, yeah. That's usually usually I don't bass. Well, I don't freshwater bass mm. fish often, but whenever I do, that's usually. The first thing that I will throw out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of boats, you have a very nice toy for 2024 in your new Camus. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to thank, you know, Nick Kelly at West Coast Marine, who's a great supporter of uh, CCA. Mm -hmm. uh, they, him and Kyle Mesa gave me the opportunity to run one and the Camus family uh, to run one this year. And, uh, that boat's incredible. I mean, uh, I'm a Mercury Pro, so it's it's powered by a Mercury 400 V10. Runs Whoa. very low RPM. Mileage is pretty good. But the boat itself, comfortable. Really comfortable. You have plenty of power in that 400. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you were saying from from here to from mainland California to San Clemente, you're, you're getting there in an hour 20. Yeah, hour 20. Yeah. Best time was one like a race car. hour and 15 minutes. That's 60, 61 miles. Yeah, going downhill. Oh, it's so goodness. nice to get home fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I've been, in, I've been out as ugly as like almost 30 knot winds with Joey and Scott one day. We come around the east end mm -hmm. and I go, ooh, this is a good test. <laughs> and you With know, those guys too. <laughs> yeah, Joey was in the back of sleep. That just tells you we were just getting wet. Yeah, you know, that was the whole thing. We yeah. got wet, but really comfortable ride. Yeah, very impressive. And a lot of storage, um, fantastic sound system. You know, it's got JL Audio sound system, two eight-and-a-half-inch subs, boy, and we just, oh. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. What a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cup pretty, holders. Lots of cup holders. More hey. cup holders than, than rod holders on the gunnels. Those so are I, important. Those are important. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you've had the opportunity to display your boat, and I think yep. it was down at the summer kickoff a couple of weeks ago at Dana yep. Landing. Yep. It was at the shows as well. I mean, I, I got a chance to kind of walk through it a little bit uh, at the show, and you're going to have so much fun this year. I can't wait to go out on it in September when we all go. Yeah, I'm ex- I, I, I get excited to show people because it's just, it's just an impressive ride. I mean, it's comfortable to sit in. It's got so much storage. It's... Um, um, the motor is incredibly quiet. You know, it's got a 175 kW uh, through hull transducer. I run all Humminbird uh, electronics, and it's all synced up to the brand new Minkota uh, Quest Instinct trolling motor. So I could operate everything from the console, mm-hmm. and then with a remote also. But I, I just sit back and and just you know, run the boat. You know, whether it's you, you anchor up on a spot or just run the bank at the front side of Clemente. It's just just comfortable. You know, I mean, everybody that's fished on it, I've had very experienced bass guys to inexperience and just a comfortable ride. Yeah. Lots of storage. You Does, yours has a tower this year, right? I have a T-top. T-top. Not, uh, <laughs> not 100% on that tea, sorry, T-top. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's great because you could still put the rods up the side of the – Mm-hmm. The console, it has a slit to put them up there. Um, but getting them in and out can be a challenge sometimes. I mean, it holds four, eight, uh, 12 rods, you know, and then it has the upper uh, rod holders, which we don't use because I had some friends on the boat and I took two rods out myself with my jig stick. <laughs> <laughs> Rip, ripped some guides out and some tips. Whoops. So, um, uh, sorry, Gary and Jay. <laughs> um, Is that the only thing you would change about your boat? I, I would. I, I had a, a um, uh, an arch on my Ranger, and I would go back to the arch and probably get some Isinglass just to to enclose that. I, I just think the castability is better. You have the arch to put your uh, radar on and put your antenna up, and um, that's the, about the only thing. Uh, otherwise, I would keep it all the same. Now, some people like uh, t tops because of the sh- the uh, sun and stay out of the s- sun. But mm-hmm. as you can see, I don't mind the sun. <laughs> I like the sun. Did, I mean, did, does it really keep the sun out of you? <coughs> other than you know, obviously, when you're sitting at the console and all that, but does it really make a difference? Uh, I'm. I mean, it, it directs on yes, yes. But you're getting it from you know the ocean oh, up. Yes, I yeah. mean, you're still getting it. You know. Yeah. Um, I wish I didn't have it right now because it's actually cold when you're sitting under there and you oh, want yeah. sun <laughs> when the sun's out. But um, it, it's good for resale because it's got four four J- jail audio speakers in there, and you know you have your radio box. Um, but I run a command mic, so the radio the VHF is up in the radio box, and I just have a a mic uh, and speaker at the helm. So, um, um, I don't know. I, I'm not. First tee top I ever had. So and I was going to say, I've never, I don't remember you ever having a tee top. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, really just because of casting ability and all that. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I guess maybe because I'm just a hardcore skiff guy, but <laughs> um, I do like the enclosure. It comes with a three pane glass. It's nice. You oh, don't, nice. you don't get it in the teeth. I tell you that mm-hmm. when it when it comes over, you don't get it, and neither does your passenger. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm still on the fence about. I think if they changed it. And went to a Key West style where it's partial and then the rods. I don't know. I don't know. So I've always had the difficult. Well, obviously because I'm uh, vertically challenged, but I've always had the <laughs> the issue of the basically the ro- the rocket launchers up top. Yep. Where it's like you got to climb all the way to get yeah, there, I'm the and it's way. almost like you don't even. You, you don't even want to climb back up to go get them. You yeah. should see me trying to raise the uh, the light and the antenna. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen once already. Oh, it's, no. it's a jungle gym act. Let me to one hand holding on to the rail up there, oh, yeah. and then the other hand. Yeah, it's yeah being vertically challenged <laughs> as you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not fun. People go, wow, that must be tough to do that every day. Yeah, well, sometimes we just don't put it down. <laughs> yeah, or put it up. Up. Yeah, yeah, but the boat's phenomenal. I mean, it rides. I, like I said, rides incredible. 
I think all boats ride great when it's flat, right? It, it better. Yeah. If it doesn't ride very good when it's yeah. flat, then you're in trouble. But Handle. I think I think where it, it really shines is when um, it, you get a little bit of weather and, uh, you know, it, it rides downhill phenomenal. You know, most boats want to dive. This thing just wants to – it doesn't – the bow doesn't pop up. When you hit the throttle, the bow doesn't shoot up. It just goes up. It's like George Jetson. It goes up and goes. Oh. It really does. It's phenomenal. I mean, it just wants it's to jump up and go. Yeah. You remember when they jump in the little yep. space? <laughs> I don't know if you know who George is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <don't we? laughs> oh, but it's man. the same deal. Yeah. it's per- People, I, when I say hold on, I go, please, just hold on. Cause, and they're like, whoa. Because it's got a lot of torque. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I have nothing but really good things to say about that. Yeah. I mean, Nick Kelly at West Coast has been phenomenal to work with on our end for the Star yeah. Tournament and all that. It's really, really good guys. Him and Kevin – that. <clears throat> yeah, they, um, I mean, they support CCA one, one, I mean, you got the 18 footer that yeah. you're giving away with the Yamaha motor yeah, for, yeah. for the uh, star tournament, which we'll probably talk about in a little bit, but yeah. that's, that's a great help. So, and he's here to support in any, any way for, for CCA to succeed. And, um, I think in the fishing world too, the, he's been very generous. So I feel very thankful to be involved and for sure when he needs I come a running. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He's a great supporter of everybody. Oh, yeah. Overall, you're pretty happy with Camus uh, as in general? Oh, man. I, I mean, I've, I've driven the 26. I've driven the 28 with the upper tower. You mm-hmm. know, I don't know if you've ever been in an upper tower of a center console that does 60. Oh. But it's pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. I mean, I did 60 in that thing up in the upper tower and – um I'd like to have it, but I don't know if I could use it as much. Mm-hmm. Um, I would drive up there all day because you can yeah. see everything. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking, I mean, if I could see the offshore guys in a 28 and twin 300s, great offshore boat. So I've driven that and I've driven the 34 yesterday. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> twin 400s, you know, twin oh 400s gosh. on a 34, 350 gallons of fuel. Gnarly. Let's see, what is that at? Eight dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, That's a second but, mortgage. Yeah. But heck, the boat itself is like a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just solid and so much storage and um, I don't know. It's 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 incredible. Just mm-hmm. incredible. So, Camus, yes, I am. Uh, we got to meet the people at the factory when uh, when um, in October last October. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did the tour, so uh, got to meet the people all behind it. You know, you got people thirty something years working on boats, and the people that do the wiring, like me, I'm a behind the scenes boat. Um, so wiring is huge. You know, everything's labeled, everything's nice and neat. And you worked on yeah. a sport boat, you know what it's like when you see a oh my god, you yes. got to deal with that. You know, <laughs> um, when, when it's like a big <laughs> spider web of disaster mm-hmm. that's pretty lightly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think that when people see the price tag they don't realize what goes into that price tag yeah. i always say timex rolex you know you're, <laughs> yeah. paying, you're paying for for quality workmanship and longevity mm-hmm. so nice very cool i i mean i'm like i said man i'm super stoked to be fishing with you this summer and yep. in september i can't wait for our trip that's gonna be so awesome yeah yeah you guys have a blast yeah. oh for sure for sure um as far as you know obviously you're you're a bass guy through, yes. through and through and all that yep. um one thing that I, that i've been meaning to ask you years ago there was a uh change in, in minimum length mm-hmm. between 12 or went from 12 to 14 um, in your opinion, you've been doing this for years and years and years. How effective has it been changing that? Just something as simple as two inches on a minimum flake. How how do you, in your opinion, how has that really been effective on the species itself? Um, you see a lot of 13 and a half, 13 and three quarters. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think it's been real beneficial. A lot of, I mean, 95% of my guests catch and release. Yep. Hey, some people go, hey, can I, you mind if I take a couple for, for tacos or whatever, I don't have a problem with you. Every right to keep a limit of five at 14 inches or better. Mm -hmm. My general rule is you don't keep anything over three. Keep that one to three, you know, minimum um, length to about maybe 
15, 16 inches, which is about two, three pounds, mm -hmm. that's fine. Nothing over that. That all all the rest we're going to release, and they're good with that. They're totally yeah. good with that, you know. Um, and uh, I just think what the sport boat guys are doing too is a lot of them are are letting big ones go, and also they're reporting what they release. Mm -hmm. I think that's real big for uh, the growth of of the bass, whether it's sand bass or calico bass. Like last year, we had a phenomenal year in sand bass fishing and a lot of release. You know, two hundred mm -hmm. release limits of of bass for 20 people that's 100 yeah. as opposed to 12 inch at 10 each at 30 people that's 300 yeah that's a huge difference yeah. and and it you know the less we take the better yeah and, and the I, general consensus on sport boats too <coughs> even if you're a regular or someone who who usually it's someone who you know doesn't go out often, but they're going out, say, mm -hmm. on a full day and we're hitting the islands or something. And when we would tell them, you know, hey, that's a breeder, that, you know, we want those. And usually 99.9% .9 mm -hmm. of the time is no problem. Yeah. So the reception, I think, has take changed. Take a picture too. and let it go. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them. I mean, they've done it. The boys and, and gals on the sport boat have done a great job of just, they understand that that growth, you know. I think with the the fishermen themselves, I think the the mentality is changing too. Yeah. Slowly, so it's, it's slowly, but it, it you can see a turn. Yeah, and I think the reduction in five is great. Uh, the increase of fourteen is great. Guess I mean twelve to fourteen. That's two inches. What are we talking about? Five years, I was maybe say, it about, takes about five, five years, years of growth. Yeah. yeah. So, and and the ideal that they're not keeping anything bigger than. Then, um, I think it's just it's it's education. It's like everything. Education is huge. I try to educate guests. Just want to slaughter everything. You know, I go yeah. okay, no problem. Um, what are you going to do with it all? Yeah, you yeah. know. I mean, just going to go in the back of the freezer for five <coughs> years. <coughs> freezer right. burn. Yeah. I mean, okay. So you have a party. I get it. But there's there's other. You know. I mean, there's other ways. Uh, but for the most part, my guests are pretty uh, conservative. Like mm -hmm. I said, one or two, maybe three. Nothing. They don't want to fill the bag, you know, per se. Um, and I think a lot of kids, I've said this before, a lot of kids are actually growing up with the mentality of releasing all the bass. Yeah. Because for, for that reason as well, which that's a good thing as well. Yeah. I mean, we, we catch fish back in the inner harbor. I'm going, you know what's back here in this water and they're living <laughs> You see that stuff floating around? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I jokingly say that. But yeah. for the most part, when we're fishing the islands and stuff, I mean, especially during the spawn, which we're starting to see them really build, where you're seeing lots of followers, mm -hmm. um, they just have to be cognizant of, of what they're taking and how many they're taking. Yeah. Um, and I think we're, we've gotten better at uh, educating people, and people are getting educated and passing it on to other people, so... They yeah. realize the big ones don't grow, especially when you give a number to it, you know. Mm -hmm. Ten pound calico, you're talking like close to 40, 35 mm -hmm. to 38 years old. So that's crazy. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they see a 12, 13, 14 inch, it goes, wow, five years old. Yeah, things old, man. It's, so yeah. 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 It's uh it's pretty crazy to think about when, you know, because <laughs> there's such a slow growing fish, yeah. how many years it really takes, it really puts wow. you or puts perspective in, in all the anglers' minds. And I think that was that's a big reason why we're letting a lot of bass go. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. I mean, are we catching a lot of bigger ones? Probably not because there's so much of that, you know, two to three pound stuff around, but that's okay. We're I mean, we're we're all about recreation, you know. Yeah. I mean, the numbers I gave you is pretty good indication of how healthy it is out there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're catching and releasing every single one. So um, so in another like five or ten years, all those two and three pounders are going to turn into five and six. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be just, just filthy rich in those. <laughs> I, we hope so. I may not be <laughs> guiding then, but <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> oh man! Well, you've uh, you've had the opportunity to fish at a place like Cedros. Yes, yeah, Cedros yeah. is one of my favorite places <laughs> near near to my part. Um, Darren, we went and uh, you uh, you killed a calico. Uh, Ugh. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Stop hey, it, it, happens. it happens. It happens. It's a rumor. <laughs> yeah, it's a rumor. It happens. Um, have you been back? Uh, you know, in the last couple of years, I, I have not. You know, I 
I don't know if I want to go back. I want to do something different. I mean, I'm yeah. going to uh, Lake Pikachu's in uh, in Sinaloa, or where is that? Sinaloa, like near Mazalan. Oh. Um, with Steve Pennard and their group in March. Nice. So I want to go fish redfish with Mo and Eric down in Louisiana, Venice, Louisiana. If you want to find a place that has trophy redfish on top water, um, Mo and Eric at uh, Journey South Outfitters. Look them up. Check them out on Instagram and. But Tony, they, they run a, doing that. They run a great operation down there where you can fish whopper plopper, chatter baits, big swim baits for thirty to forty pound redfish. So oh, gnarly. Let's go. That's one thing I wish we got to do when we yeah. went to um to Texas a month ago. Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah. I I wish we had more time to fish down there. I'm not familiar with it. You and at me all, both. I guess um I don't know who scheduled that trip, but we're looking at you, Chris. Um, we're looking at you. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> F- FYI, wherever you travel to, at least spend one day fishing somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's a good trip. Well, Chris has got, he's got little kids, but little. Hey, guy, don't but. make his problem my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, out of, out of the three of us, I was the only one who brought my little travel rod. And you guys looked at me like, why, why'd you bring that? Yeah. Well, um, why not? But why anyways, not? yeah, exactly. I mean. <laughs> Cedros is, is one of those places. I think if nobody's been, um, uh, go, go. It's a great experience. I mean, I, I'm not anxious to go back because I we fish calicos all the time. So, yeah. um, And um, great operations down there. Some yeah. great operations. Yeah. And, and, you know, you want to catch fish um, in Yellowtail. I mean, that's where you can catch, catch them on, on the jig. Um, but don't, don't call me... I get people that call me and goes, hey, I want to prepare for Cedros. I want to come fishing with you and go to Clemente. I go, it's not the same. <laughs> no, totally it's a, different. It's, it's a, like an hour and a half, two hour ride to the island, and it may not bite right away, and the yellows aren't always there, and um, the ride home could be wet and wild, you know, yeah. so... I love I, that comparison. I, I, yeah, I may not be the guy, and but every oh, but we we know it can be like that. Well, it can be, but it's kind of nice to be in a ponga in the lee of the <laughs> island and go fish bass and and then go fish, uh, you know, yellows either north or at the point, you know, mm-hmm. and just hammer down. Yeah. Well, you know, you can catch them. Um, that's a that's a great feeling, and knowing that you're not going to get beat up too much. Because the Pongaros don't want to. No. Mm-hmm. They don't yeah. even like getting wet. So <laughs> <laughs> if you ever notice that, they hug the beach when they go. I was like, why does this yes, thing, do. why do they take the long way, man? I would have went from point A to point B, but they're, they're you know what I mean? They're yeah. like hugging yeah. the now beach. Now that you say that, that's, we did do a lot of beach hugging. When yeah. We were. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like twice. But I, I, I encourage people because, like you said, there's some great, great outfits down there that, that really take care of you to do yeah. that. So Yeah. Have you, where else in the world have you been able to go uh, fishing and all that? What well, sticks out to you? I mean, nowhere around the world, but, you know, Texas, you know, I was with Matt uh, when he did an event in Texas for the BASS. He so. stayed at that place that had a, a lake. Or oh, a had a, oh, you walk out in your, your slippers and jammas and, <laughs> with a cup, cup of coffee, coffee and start making coffee. <laughs> You saw the video I made, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. literally like 15 steps, and there's this gorgeous pot. Yeah, he he set us up. He set it up pretty good, and it was wasn't that expensive to stay. It's cheaper than a hotel for three people. You know, it's like wow, two ninety five a night. Oh, that's in this bad. gorgeous that's home, awesome. You know, um, and we got to fish like three times a day. You know, it just yeah, it's freshwater bass fishing, but yeah, you weren't it's getting fishing. yeah, you weren't getting beat up. You weren't getting there. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to I've been to Florida. I caught redfish. I was actually with Pete Gray nice. a number of years back, but been there. Um, Do you ever go fishing whenever, like, go into Bassmaster Classic or ICAST or anything like that? Uh, yeah. When we, when I was at ICAST, I went. I tried to because I don't usually have a responsibility to be anywhere. <laughs> Good for you. Um, <laughs> so I'll fish in the morning and go hang out. Get there right at happy hour. You know, three four o'clock with all the beer. Have you been to iCash yet? I'm first going time. Oh, first time. First you'll time. you'll yeah. see it at like 334. All of a sudden you see these like beer, <laughs> beer and you, you know what I'm There's talking about. Bars. There's these rolling <laughs> bars come out and Lawrence has a great happy hour spread and Costa has food out and you're like, huh, who has the best deal? And you just roll by there. <laughs> we, we need to start doing that at our shows out here. Oh, three, I, I agree. Three, four o'clock just for start the vendors. Yeah. 
Ah, it's very impressive. But um, I've been, you know, I fish the Indian River. We fish redfish and black drum and snook. Um, been out to like Cape Canaveral, tried fishing cobia. Um, but nothing around the world. My, my wants would be, again, fishing Venice, Louisiana coming up. Uh, we're going to do it next October. I have a trip set up with my clients. And then I want to do more Mexico. I want to do more Cabrilla, take the skiffs down and fish Cabrilla. Oh, I've caught. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, keep going. Yeah. So <laughs> we haven't done that in about a year. I mean, I did that project with BD Outdoors uh, about a year and a half ago where I towed my boat all the way to Bay of L.A. I was and, just about to ask. And that was probably an epic experience. Oh, it was great. Stressful, too, but epic. It was stressful driving and driving back, but otherwise, while you were there, oh, man, such. That was a cool video. It, yeah, you like that? Yeah. yeah. They did a really good job. You know, Matt Neustadter and their their group, their group did a, a great job on it. And, you know, we had great company. Um, and it was just all we had to do is go fishing, you know. <laughs> And they, had, and they had Cuban rum in the bar. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and Florida Kanye, so we were all good. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, but I'd like to go to Wisconsin and fish uh, that trophy smallmouth, you know, like six, oh, five yeah. to seven pound smallmouth. I'd like to go do that. Um, you know, uh, anything that has to do with bass, I'm, I'm into. Mm. You know, I, I just, I'm, I'm not after the big trophy. I'd like to go fish Pargo down in Panama. Mm. I enjoy that. You know, yeah. anything like the inshore stuff, I enjoy. I don't, I don't enjoy really cruising around fishing tuna. I know that the tuna guys are going, oh man, you're just a bass guy. But <laughs> I just stay in my lane. I love doing the inshore <laughs> stuff. You know, I really do um, because you, um, uh, the catching is the more probable. Even though you'd be in Panama and see like hundred pound yellowfin or Dorado and all that, which is great. I just don't like driving around. Yeah. I mean, even though I do it every day, I just like seeing it, you know, a lot of, a lot of visuals, uh, the visual stuff's incredible. Um, doesn't mean I, I wouldn't do it. If we happen to come across a foam around, I'm, I'm going to cast <laughs> on it. Of course. Hopefully it's not too big where I'm going to have to work. <laughs> I like the manageable stuff. So, yeah, but that, yeah, that, that would be it. You know, not, not too much. So in August, we're going on on the Tony Riz, uh, doing that trip. We're doing nothing but Cabrilla fishing. How different of a bite is Cabrilla compared to Calicos? It's very similar. <clears throat> I mean, you'll be coming over a big. You'll always you, they'll put you in these shallow areas. You see boulders everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see this big. You'll think of boulders chasing your lure, mm -hmm. and the next you know it's like turns. You see this thing blow up on it, and you're like. Oh, S. Da, 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 yeah. da. <laughs> it's same thing. Lockdown drag. Um, I, I, I'd encourage you to use uh, this floor, uh, this titanium wire called not too naughty, something like that. I, I have a picture of it. I sounds think. naughty. Yeah, it and it comes already rigged, and you could you know fish like a Shimano one seventy jerk bait. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger ones. The big ones, yeah. yeah. So it's a surface bite? I always thought you fish for them. Um, they were deeper. Not not the way we want no. to fish them. Yeah. You can get them deeper on some of the pinnacles where you're catching the grouper and all that, but that's boring. <laughs> that's so boring. The, few, the few we got in La Paz were surface bites. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. I ha I've yeah. never caught one before. Yeah. I have no idea. Oh, it's like, and, and I think I said on the video, it's like, it's like a calico on steroids, but until you actually experience it, because yeah. it's cliche to say it, it's on steroids, I mean, an eight ten eight ten pounder is a small one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like you saw the picture of Matt who caught one on a swimmer. It's like mm -hmm. over twenty. He's gotten like two or three over twenty. That's like the goals over twenty, and then catch a a golden. You know the oh yeah the golden big, big goldfish. Mm -hmm. yeah. have, you, have you been able to catch? I have golden? not. No, oh. and my biggest cabria is like just under twenty. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's I've caught them on surface iron and jerk baits. Yeah. Okay. So you can catch you can catch them on a surface iron. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good to but know. Good to I know. tell you that jerk bait fishing for them is just awesome. Yeah. Again, it's all visual. Does yeah. Shimano sell a bigger size than one seventy? Um, no, that's it. But they okay. also have a a subsurface lure that mm -hmm. you can throw for them too. That uh, one of the guys uh, Blaine told me about. And he goes, "Yeah, I'd fish that next time you go down there." I go, "Okay," and then. The Japanese guy I took from Japan showed me this 190 size 
Glide bait? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Is it yeah. pretty heavy? Yeah, you can jack that thing a mile. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, it's... Did, about, did he throw it when he was with you? He fished it the whole. He caught nothing but fives and sixes. His, he just released his video on YouTube, but it's all in Japanese and it speaks <laughs> Japanese. But you don't need to, you don't need to know. You just yeah, watch the fish watch. blow up on it. Fishing yeah. is fishing. That's yeah. So, um, but I mean, it's pretty simple. It's really simple fishing down there. And I know the Tony raises for the money is probably one of your better trips you can do. So, um, yeah. and they like to kill everything. <laughs> yeah and again yeah. <laughs> cabria is really good and i think over the years i think they're starting to really you know just like uh cedros is everything's catch and release now they're really starting to watch their kill ratio you know because they're it's seeing good. a decline in big ones same yeah. thing is there like a method to where kind of like how we just kind of discussed on calicos but is there a method as to what the size like I guess the limit as to what you want to kill versus what you shouldn't kill. I don't know if there is a limit. I mean, I've seen guys. I know there's not a limit, but like in like methodology and all that, like do um, you want to kill the big ones or would you prefer to keep the smaller ones? I, I, I don't know. I mean, when we go down, we'll keep one or two for a meal for like eight to 10 people. Right. You know, that's more than enough. Um, I, I would say it's like anything. The medium-sized ones, you know, mm -hmm. are probably better. You know, like maybe a 10-pounder would be suffice. So not like a 20 or 30, but maybe like around the 10 to 15. And again, you think that thing's older? Yeah. Might be a little tougher. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to ask you know? what their growth rate is. If, they're, yeah. if they, they grow fast or if they grow they, slow. They grow slow also. And that's uh, – so when we went down, you know, when they did the – you saw the interview between – with me and uh, – Yoel, the uh, mm -hmm. he's a, a biologist also, and also uh, oh, that's right a guide. So he was explaining to us before the interview that they are slow growing and that they're encouraging more catch and release as opposed to to killing, um, mm -hmm. just because of slow growth. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you want to keep a few, the medium sized ones are better to eat, anyways. Yeah. So you know, it's like me and the two to three pound calicos. It's very similar. So mm -hmm. we had it, a long conversation about that. Yeah, and that's kind of where I was going with it, where, you know, I would love to bring some Capria back, but the keyword is some. Just, just maybe a couple couple fish, and mm -hmm. I'm good with that, just to have it. Yep. Um, but it, primarily our group, I mean, Darren's part of that group, um, except you killing that calico at Cedros. Um, we're, <laughs> prim <laughs> we're primarily all catch and release. Yeah. I mean, you're going to catch yellows, too. It's, it's yeah. inevitable. I mean, they're there, so, you know, those things grow like Dorado, I mean. Yeah, they grow pretty quick, and uh, I mean, but you know, I I don't know what they're. Um, it's not like going on a long range boat where you have a uh, salt brine and yeah. they bleed them, yeah. and you know what I mean, yeah. go and gut them and all that. So I don't know, I don't know that process. Um, you, did you catch trigger fish out down there too? Ah, uh, you catch a bunch if you want. Yeah, yeah, like the small um, vertical jigs, you catch them. Don't bring plastics with you. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, I they figured. chew the heck out of them, yeah. Yeah, you're just going to replace with every cast. Yeah, like. yeah. There's a lot of that um, uh, golden golden spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of those down there. You could, Those are good eatings, what I understand, mm -hmm. yeah. and they grow pretty good. Also, pinto bass. Mm -hmm. I don't know if yeah. they call them the same thing, the golden golden spots and, and pinto bass, same thing, but they have those down there too. Yeah. On, on the Shimano jerk baits, do you normally replace the hardware? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gamagatsu number ones and split rings. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just they're just gnarly. Yeah, and, I mean the the strike initially is pretty pretty. You'll see, you will see. I mean it's you know jerk jerk jerk, thunk, and then they go <laughs> they go straight for the boulders because yeah. you're fishing in the boulders with them, and they'll go straight. And that's yeah. why the titanium, because that initial you know, in the rock thing, you'll be able to get them out. Yeah. Uh, you're fishing heavy fluorocarbon. I fished a 100-pound fluorocarbon and still got busted off. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of the rock is volcanic. Uh, so, you know, because all those little islands and everything are all volcanic islands. So <clears throat> they're not – it's not like barnacle or anything like that. It's gnarly. Mm -hmm. How yeah. long is that titanium leader? Um, I think it's like 18 to 24 inches. Oh. So it's perfect. And they're you get them rigged. Mm -hmm. Where it has the split ring and uh, a clip on it. Oh yeah. So, but I usually replace out the clip and put like a hundred pound 
flip on it. So now you can change out your, yeah. you know, from either surface iron to jerk bait or different jerk baits. So that actually brings me to a conversation we had. I think last the last time you were on the podcast, where you're a clip guy, you yes. like using clips. Yeah, yeah. I'm currently using the Spro uh, saltwater clip, mm-hmm. and for me in my business, it's it's good because if I want to fish crankbait, spinnerbait, swim bait, whatever it may be, I can change out really quick. And same with um, a heavier rod, like a 300 size reel, like a 300 tranks and medium heavy rod. I can go bigger swim bait, bigger weedless, big jerk bait, a rig type mm-hmm. thing. So, and does it does it bother the the action? No. Do the fish care? No. They really don't. Not yeah. like freshwater. It's it's uh, more a factor. I mean, these things, all they want to do is kill the thing at the end of your line, which is your lure. So Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen it deter. Um, I've had two anglers that caught 10 pounders with clips on it. Nice. You know, I don't know. So, Well, going back up north of the border, you're kind of, uh, you know, through uh, every day you're going on trips and all that stuff. You're mixing it up, right? You're doing you're doing swim baits on certain days, crank baits on others, and all that. Yeah, it, it all depends, you know, how we pattern. Like the other day, I was fishing nothing but five inch weedless baits on a five o uh, gamagatsu weightless hook, mm-hmm. weighted hook on thirty pound psycho fluorocarbon, afco fluorocarbon, fifty pound uh, power pro, and a medium rod for throwing. We were fishing leading edges. And boy, they, you saw bunches of them coming mm-hmm. out. In fact, the lead guy, like Derek, who was on the bow, was throwing a head, and his buddy Zod was in the back. I go, Zod, if he hooks one, cast right on top of him. Mm-hmm. And he goes, why? I'll be in his way. I go, you will not be on his mm-hmm. way. You'll be catching the bigger fish. And sure enough, he he was kind of like, well, I don't want to do that to Derek. I go, forget that. <laughs> do that to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> and so he get Derek gets one like two and he gets his one like four and a half. I go, that's what you're after. You're after the bigger because you'd see like four or five of them trying to eat the bait mm-hmm. and you'll see a big one there just trailing everybody. So and he's going, that works. I go, oh, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> so advice to everybody if the captain tells you to do something, do please. It. Tony knows best. Oh, she should gosh. probably make suggestions all the time. But no, I think I'll just I'll just do it my way. I go. Okay, you do you do you. <laughs> yeah, you're you're only on the water 340 days out of the yeah. year. You, what do you know? <laughs> what do I know? Yeah, what do I know? Um, but hey, I'm not going to argue if you want to. He's getting bit, you know, at one o'clock, and you want to cast six o'clock. Have at it, bro. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, even me when I hire guys, I'm doing exactly what they say and what they're using, when to use it, and how to use it because. Yeah. They're on the water a lot, you know. I mean, whether you're fishing on a sport boat or a guide or whatever it may be, just follow their direction. Believe me, they want you to catch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing more than adding to their fish count and seeing you successful. That's our goal. It's not about taking you for a ride or making you cast the wrong way. It's a hundred percent about catching. We get really upset. You ever notice when a captain's not catching, they get a little grouchy. <laughs> a little <Right>. grouchy? <laughs> Just a little? <laughs> Just a little. Uh, I get I get stressed. It's like, oh, my gosh, they're not freaking biting. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I've, I've been to Catalina, to Santa Monica, back to PV, all in one day because I wasn't getting bit. You know? I think I was on that trip. <laughs> Remember where we went that day? Yeah. yeah. We went all the way to Santa Monica. Well, yeah. we, we found biting fish, thank God. Thank God you got that good one on the surface iron. Yeah. But um, That was a good one. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, I mean, in order to be successful or you make the wrong decision, you know. Yeah. yeah. should have zigged when you should have zagged, but... Every day is a learning experience for us, too, you know. Um, Every day is a new story. Is It definitely is. Yeah, I told my guys the other day when I go, listen, we're going to make a – we're going to stop, make 10 casts, and move. They're not biting. we got to find where they're bunched up. And finally, I started seeing that. I go, okay, we're going to work this whole stretch. We should get bit in here. Nice. So. Nice. Well, I know we're um, – we are half – yeah, almost halfway through 2024, but what kind of big plans do you have for the summer? What uh, What's on your agenda? Survive. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've got a busy um, 
June isn't as bad, but July and August is pretty pretty booked. Pretty stacked. Yeah. yeah. Um, I look forward to it though. I re- look forward to the you know to see what what the summer brings for us. You know, we had phenomenal bass fishing local. I mean, local. I'm talking four miles from the harbor. Just incredible sand bass, calico bass, and and you sit on one spot for hours. And I would ask, are you guys bored of doing it? He goes, oh, we're catching. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the old saying, you never leave fish to find fish, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that was a really good problem to have for about a month. Mm-hmm. Um, we were away from the fleet. The fleet was doing their thing. You know, they'd fish bass in the morning, go fish barracuda in the afternoon, and I stay away from those slimy things. So <laughs> um, we just try to stay in our lane and do our deal. Mm-hmm. And the islands were biting, you know, a lot a lot of bait fishing, you know, for, for the yellows. Um, and then some days fishing bass on the back up at Salt Ferry in the back. And then uh, about 1 o'clock leaving the island and fish that stuff close to the beach. That tuna was was off the canyon every day between – one and three o'clock come up really, really good. So really tried to take advantage. If my guys wanted to, they yeah. wanted to go do it. Um, a lot of them really didn't care either way mm-hmm. um, until we start coming in the harbor and they see these foamers everywhere. And they're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I go, not those. Those are 100-plus pounders. Yeah. <laughs> those over there look manageable. Yeah. 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 So, But uh, plan-wise, no, I just, I just you know, want to continue running a good operation and – you know, having some happy guests leave, and um, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how it goes. Well, I know we've got some pretty epic summer plans involving you, Benny, when it comes to our star tournament as well. Um, I know. By the way, you're registered and all that stuff. You're all set up. To I think I was one of the first to do it. I think you were the first, actually. <laughs> I think. Well, we uh, we're actually going to announce it here um, and today as well. But Benny, you have offered a trip to the biggest bass overall in the first month of the tournament for the, uh, I guess, the adult uh, 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 division for the star tournament. So thank you for that. Oh, yeah. That one's going to be an epic, epic deal. It's going to be the battle of the bass. Yeah. The first 30 days of the star tournament. Absolutely. And all, all my guests that fish with me in the month of May, be prepared to submit your registration so we can try to uh, get you um uh, on that winning fish mm-hmm. yep and they could do it easily through the fishing chaos app as well absolutely yeah. Just download the app and it's right there uh that's a new thing this year to where um you can actually register for the tournament either at the cca site or on directly on the app as well doesn't matter it's gonna I, be epic i need to practice on that because i have it on here but i've yet yet to use it so um on fishing chaos yeah yeah super, i mean I'm, super all, simple. I'm all registered and ready to go so the first few might be challenging because I've never used the app, but always I hear how easy it is to use. So. Yeah. Well, as Tony uh, <clears throat> did a uh, phenomenal video earlier this week, she actually has a uh, video out there that shows you exactly what to do. It's oh, super well, then I, I need to watch that. Yeah. And I encourage <laughs> yeah. all the anglers to watch it. <laughs> if she's already done it and can show me, oh, my gosh, that make it better than trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's actually super, super simple. Wouldn't you agree? I I consider myself a very cheesy person, so I would say it's a little it's a little cheesy video, but it it covers a lot of topics, and I just go through how to submit your fish. Um, we did a screen recording and kind of a play by play to show you what it looks like through the app. Now that uh, capability to upload your fish won't be active until tomorrow. tomorrow. Actually, midnight tonight. Midnight oh, wow. tonight. Yeah. So May 25th. That'll be tomorrow. This podcast will come out after. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, once once it uploads tomorrow, you'll be able to see. The, the app will open up a lot more than what the interface shows prior to the 25th. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it'll be good. It'll be good. And we we can start submitting Saturday? Saturday. Tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday. Yeah. Oh. Mid- midnight tonight. Holy cow. If you really wanted to. Yeah, so, for all those intense anglers that want to start fishing at midnight tonight, <clears throat> go for it. It's awesome. Let's yeah. go hit the docks tonight. Get your entries in yeah. so you can come fishing with me. Yes. Yes, for sure. Well, also, we have another announcement. You're, you know, I, I've, I've noticed something super important to you, Benny, and we want to capitalize on the on this is taking kids fishing. It's been super important to you for years and all that. And you've actually put up another great prize for the youth division too. Yeah, we're gonna give away an inshore bass 
we call that a package uh, yeah. for a for the youth. Kind of like Darren's package that we had <laughs> talked about a long time ago. Yeah, a long time uh, ago. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, Terramore and Shar Ride, Tranks three hundred. We're gonna fill a, a, a box full of some of my favorites of uh, pickle kicks. Uh, MC, I mean, just basically coming out of my boat and into a box for them. Gonna give them some coastal charter swag and maybe a few AFCO pieces also. I haven't talked to the marketing manager yet. <laughs> <laughs> because we just came up with this idea when we sat down. I, uh, I hear you have an in with AFCO. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just order it off my budget. I think that might be easier. <laughs> but we're going to do up something for, for one of the uh, um, youth, mm -hmm. and that is 13 to... 13 to 17. 13 to 17 for yep. the biggest bass of the month of... Yep. The first month of the uh, star tournament. Yep, first 30 days. So basically it's going to be the same time frame, youth and adult divisions. But ultimately the, the adult division is going to get a trip, and then the youth division is going to get uh, this inshore package. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think what would be really cool is if a father's son both won it, <laughs> you'd be able to go fishing, and then that you'll have awesome. gear to take with you to come fishing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you again, my friend. You've been always a huge supporter of CCN. Uh, it's the least I can do to help help the uh, future of fishing and, and CCN and its plight to keep us fishing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know um, the last couple of days uh, leading up to the start of the Star Tournament, I know a lot of people have actually signed up at the last minute. There's a lot of excitement out there. It's been blowing up on social media fantastically. It's 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 really exciting, and I can't believe tomorrow is the first day of the Star Tournament. It's and, here. And it's they here. can still <laughs> sign up as the tournament goes, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And I think we're going to get more people as the tournament goes on, as yep. people start winning prizes and, and all that. Yep. And I'd like to see, I mean, if you, guys, if you anglers out there want to post on my Instagram page, feel free to post up there. I'd love to see those those big bass yeah and um you know a third a youth can win the boat too uh they cannot they they're cannot. gonna have their but they can win a brand new hobie kayak it's oh well, that's over there. not shabby either <laughs> no <laughs> yes yes but it i mean overall benny it's been a phenomenal um it's really been humbling to watch so many anglers support the star tournament in our first year ever um, I know it's huge out in Texas and Louisiana and, and Florida and all those other states, but in California, our first year, it's been a phenomenal response. Yeah, that's good. It's good to hear. And I imagine it's only going to get, it's going to steamroll, you know, I mean, yeah. with participation that Tony had at the little spotty event they had, mm -hmm. that just tells you, you know, the, uh, the growth of our, our sport and, yeah. you know, this, it's open to all the different, you know, species, tuna, Mm -hmm. White sea bass, yellowtail, the basses, mm -hmm. and halibut. So, yeah. you know, those of you fishing in the Marina del Rey halibut tournament, I believe there's s s different divisions. I mean, you could easily enter your winning halibut in the in the star tournament. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Why not be double a part dip. of that one? Yeah, double dip. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good summer for sure, and that's uh, that's because of Star and and sponsors like you, Benny. So thank you, my friend. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to do it. We're running up against time. But, uh, Benny, how do we get uh, involved with uh, your operation? How do we get to go fishing with you? Um, number of ways, uh, phone number 310-779-0397. That's direct. You can leave me a, mex te a message, text. <laughs> you can go to uh, Instagram at coastal underscore charters or just go to my website. Leave me a message at fishcoastalcharters.com. And we look to seeing you all aboard soon. Yeah, yeah. And there's still spots available in your schedule and calendar? Yeah, they'd have to call me and I'd send out some dates. I like mm -hmm. to do a little phone interview to get a feel for what, what you're really looking <laughs> for. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you you guys, Darren, Tony, Chris, for inviting me on the show. I always like to talk fishing with you. And oh, for sure. I really like your guys' new digs here. So. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. It's coming along pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, we'll have to uh, have you back, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about how the year shaped up, and, and we'll have a star winner, too. Oh, love to. Yeah, love to. Yeah, for sure. We should do a podcast, a mini a mini podcast on his boat when we go fishing with him. Oh, Let's that's go. A yeah, Let's that, do it. That's a Doc Talk episode. Yep. Yep. Yep, for sure. 
Well, guys, that is going to do it this week on the CCA California Podcast. Make sure to go register for the 2024 Star Tournament at joincca.org. And make sure to, to follow us on Instagram at CCA California as well. Guys, epic episode per the usual. Thank you, Benny. Appreciate you Thank coming you, Benny. on. Thanks, guys. Yep. And with that, we will see you guys next week.